uh, so many government functions. Yes. Uh, and uh, high on my list is the privatization of prison. Yes. Uh, and, and, uh, and what goes on in, in many prisons. Yeah. That's very disturbing. Yes, it's very shocking. And, and that's one thing that Amnesty International has talked about, the prisons in the United States violate all the basic human rights documents, including the treaties we have signed on civil and political rights in so many ways because of <coughs> capital punishment as well as solitary conditions in prisons and all of that. And of course, this isn't publicized very much in the press, but you see it from time to time. Yeah, yeah. Peter. Well, I hesitate to speak for other people, especially young people, but the feeling of hopelessness uh, that people uh, get away with things, you know, that there's no consequences paid for, for evil deeds and misbehavior. And we see this all the time in the popular press. And people are, are born again or rejuvenated and they're back in the, in the limelight. And so there's a feeling that no matter what crime or what um, misdeed, it, there's no punishment that's meted out. There's nothing uh, that's consequential of, of their mm -hmm. actions. And so why bother? Yeah. Uh, it's all, the game has already been lost. And, and I, I see, I hear this from the students that I work with yeah. on a daily basis yeah. at the college that uh, often don't even care to vote because the game's already yeah. been Lost. Yeah, we've also been reading about cheating scandals at Harvard that a lot of students at Harvard consider it perfectly reasonable to, to cheat Very and sad. plagiarize and all of it, even a place like that, yeah, that, that it's, and, and the, there isn't a lot of punishment for it, so it's really out of the open, whereas before the skull and bones, you know, the secret society, <laughs> but now it's, it's out, everyone, it's very democratic. <laughs> Everyone can lie and cheat and get away with it. Not just top generals. Yeah. Um, Al Corn has has a special program, uh, Sign Hard Reality, which has been twenty twenty four hours around the world. We have all the top scientists speaking. Um, I signed this petition. I emailed friends about it. And I, I'm wondering how we could do something like that, hmm. where we could yeah. have enough people come together yeah. that could form an, inter an internet conversation yeah. that would dream around the world. I think it also would really be good to have a person-to-person -person conversations, to, to get your neighbors involved, to get right. people because it's it's really more effective than sometimes than you know just internet communication. We have to reach people who don't hear this word. We have to make it normal to be opposed to war. I agree with you. Amongst all sorts of people. I agree with you. But by using this media, yeah, you can reach well, yes, yes, you can use the media. I mean, that's why it was basically yeah. so effective using the internet. Oh, I, 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 I certainly use the internet all the time to right. reach people, but I, I think there are people who need to be reached who, who aren't even on the internet, although I think geeks could be reached and, and brought into the fold. I think, and they definitely are using the internet. I, I'm sorry, is that a derogatory term? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's that kind of person. It's a cop. about the use of computers. Right. And often those people are leaning libertarian anyway. Mm -hmm. to, to bring the libertarians into the anti-war movement would be helpful. Some are already in. But I, I think there's that possibility too, because you know, the Libertarian Party was, was anti-war at one time and got a little... It still is. Yeah, it still is. but, but uh, that, that, need, that part of it needs to be amplified a lot. Yes? 
I guess my, my sadness is in the institutions of higher learning. Yeah. I walked from Franklin Pierce College in 1968 to Keene State College, Peace Walk, yes. with, uh, with uh, Taylor Marks. Joined up with folks from Keene State, went into the common, and we were there for a whole day. Yeah. And it was on the campuses. It was in Boston when I went in, and I was part of SDS for a while. And it was about getting young people, intelligent people, to start talking. Yes. And also to start figuring out, how do you change this? How do we affect politics? I, I think that's, how do we affect it? But it's I not just, happening anymore. I, it's very yes. little if it is. I, 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 yes. You hear about little pieces of it. Yeah. But it also, it also took the great teachers to give us and mentor us and give us the model of it. And you're doing wonderful things with your one person. Well, I have been trying for years to talk to political scientists and activists and uh, scholars to f try to figure out how change can be produced rather than just going ahead and, and doing another demonstration or another whatever petition drive, what is effective? And people are hesitant to do that. I was a member of the Haymarket People's Fund funding board for four years in the 1980s. And I asked them if they knew how change was through. They said they want to change the world, you know, they want to change the system. But they would not spend a penny for research on how to change the system, because that's elitist. They're only going to fund organizing. But maybe that kind of organizing they were doing wasn't the way. Maybe a national political party might have been more important. But they, they didn't want to fund that. And that's true of a lot of uh, radical people. They don't. They want to find out how to do it. They think they know. But it's not so easy to figure out how, how change occurs. We could look at history, too, and see what happened.